Okay, so John has a final question. Uh, how do you see new code, the new code place in NLP for the future? At the moment, it's my best suggestion about how to conduct change work. It's very fast, it's very ecological. Um, the requirements in terms of complexity are sharply reduced. These are all things I think are useful. It also insists on active and precise work interacting with the unconscious processes, your own self-calibration, as well as those of, of the person you're working with, the group you're working with. Uh, I think the continuing focus on unconscious processes and their explication over time as we discover, as we move deeper into the neurology, the idea that I was talking about, about the bobcat that passes by and leaves a print. As we move underneath these surface indicators and begin manipulating in the most positive sense possible, underlying neurology, the underlying physiology of biochemistry, that there will be a natural deepening of the focus beyond the surface indicators we call calibration points. What's on the other side of that? I look forward to discovering through the same spirit that we attempted to capture in this book. Um, my hope is that that's the direction that NLP will take. Um, the intellectual or analytic portion of it is a separate sport. Um, philosophers do this. I think they do a service because they stimulate our thinking. They challenge uh, paradigms which uh, in the past have been successful, which triggers something. When I was in Amsterdam and had contact with a serious, significant number of people in the, apparently the Dutch NLP community, I had this very strange, regressive sensation. When Bandler and Puselik and I first made public the patterning that we were working in outside of these small practice groups we were running, I began to offer this publicly in different places around the United States and in Europe, etc. Uh, we got a huge pushback from the psychiatric community. Um, statements like, it can't be that simple but you don't understand what you're doing, to which we said neither do you, so we're in the same boat. Anyway, the, there was a built-in resistance, and the resistance certainly had an economic component. If you spent four years in university, three, four years in medical school, another year in internship, your specialty maybe, and one of the specialties, of course, was psychiatry, then these two, three strange, young men walking out of the Mount Santa Cruz mountains who can get changes that are to dream for from your point of view. There has to be something wrong here. And there is a vested interest just yes. as, why do we still have internal combustion engines? Because we have big oil and we have big auto. If they weren't there, there wouldn't be the resistance in the world to moving into other forms. So there, this is not an unusual thing. This is the way our social systems seem to work. There's an investment in capital, investment in personal education and development, which, when challenged by a new paradigm, causes discomfort and a resistance. Acting as if, if I hadn't made it clear before, is a key to what we've managed to do to create this field called neurolinguistic programming. It's still one of the most powerful tools for research I know about. So I invite members watching and listening to this, members in particular since this was designed for the Dutch NLP community, to set aside portions of what they have already mastered. It's not going to go away. It'll be there. You can pick it up and use it later. And act as if they are congruently interested in finding by direct experience what the consequences of this new set of patterns called new progress. If they give it a fair shake that way, Whatever decision they arrive at is their, their choice, and I respect that. But to make a decision without having the experience, direct experience, seems to me to be exactly the position the psychiatric community took with respect to the beginnings and the origins of it. Thank you, John, for the A pleasure, Bob. A pleasure, too.